Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to um, take away from our regularly scheduled programming of book reviews and film reviews to talk about internet behavior. So, this is one of those videos where something happened and it affected me, and I need to talk about it because it also, in many ways, affects how I think about the internet and how. As a homeschool parent, I want to talk about teaching our children how to behave, particularly on social media. So what spurred this on? Um, people are, if people are paying attention or aware, um, a now former um, video essayist who was on YouTube for a little over about 13 years or so by the name of Lindsay Ellis, in the last year or so has been crucified for a random tweet about comparing anime. I'm not entirely clear on what exactly they're crucifying her for. Um, but the both Twitter and YouTube and essentially social media, um, particularly of her own community, attacked her in mass to a point where the end of this December, she has removed herself completely from YouTube, from Nebula, which was a platform that she was moving on to with a variety of friends to get away from YouTube. Um, she's left Twitter and basically is retreating as much as possible as an author can from the public eye because it's destroying her mental health. It's destroying her mental and her physical health because people dehumanized her. Now, I was able to read um, what she posted on her Patreon page because somebody happened to post it on the Riddick community, and it's heartbreaking. What this did to a human being, a human being, is horrific. They tore her to shreds. They're her, this, is her, this isn't, this isn't just people who are on, we would, call the, the radical right or whatever they are. These are people within her, within her own community. These were people who had formally supported her, people who had followed her, who turned on her for whatever deranged reason, and she got attacked by a mob, and people went after her, were nitpicking years of not necessarily tweets, because Twitter hasn't been allowed around that quite long. I don't pay attention to Twitter. I was on it briefly, got away, got away from it for political reasons, just because it was toxic. Um, and literally only got started watching YouTube back in maybe 2017. Um, at, oddly enough, the recommendation of a co-worker to follow another YouTuber um, by the name of Don Noble. And that's how I found Lindsay, was through him. Um, and specifically a former channel that I will not name, but they were both connected with at the time. So, and had left due to a toxic work environment. So she started her YouTube career with this channel back when I believe she was a, uh, a student at NYU. So she was a young college student and she's evolved and grown and grown up as you do in about 13, 14 years. And people had, they were nitpicking everything she did for a little over a decade, which is insane. And it became a mob mentality. And this is kind of what I want to talk about is as a person, as a parent, as someone who has chosen to come on YouTube as a hobby, I'm doing this not for money, not for the bloody algorithm. A lot of this I'm doing this for myself to share information because I love sharing books. I love talking about education. I love talking about movies and children's books and how it works into what I'm planning to do with my daughter and education. That's why I did this. I have a master's degree in library science. As a stay-at-home mom who's planning to teach your kid, I needed an outlet for my degree. <laughs> That's why I started this. 
But in this video, I really want to talk about how we talk to our children and how we behave on social media. Because in this day and age, we seem to forget that on the other side of that screen, that person we're criticizing, be they a YouTuber, be they a random person on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere, are humans. They're humans with hearts and feelings and lives and pasts and traumas all of their own. And we forget that. We have a tendency to forget that we're attacking a human being because we're a step away from it. As humans, we're social. This is a biology thing where human beings are a social creature. One of the things science has taught us is that a lot of our cues and our language is nonverbal. It's through watching body movements and face movements and me talking with my hands and our eyes and all the thousands of muscles that are in the space. Yeah, there are thousands of muscles and thousands of nerves in the face that we use to communicate with. And that is taken away when you're talking on the phone, when you're typing on the internet, it becomes faceless. And we forget that on the other side is a human, a living human being. I'm a person. I have a family. I have a past. I have traumas all of my own. And as well as various other things. So I try to keep that in mind when I am on the internet, when I am communicating with people, primarily I use both Reddit and as of now, Facebook, or I, I use Facebook a little bit and I use um, YouTube. Now when it comes to YouTube videos, I never ever put a negative comment because people work hard to do their videos. I work hard to do mine. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. It's not easy to do this when my child is sleeping and I have four cats. In fact, there's one in my lap here. Um, so, and then I still have to edit them, which has gotten more difficult since my daughter, daughter no longer naps. So I respect other YouTube creators. I always respected the YouTube creators I watched. And when I do a comment, normally it's a compliment. It's, I see these people working hard. I enjoy their content. If I didn't, I wouldn't be watching it. I mean, that's the best thing to do. It's like, you don't like it? Fine. Stop watching it. Nobody's forcing you to. Stop following this person. Nobody's forcing you to. But don't go attacking them. Don't go attacking another person because they're a person and your comment could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. It could be the one more comment that drives someone to suicide. You don't know that. Could hurt them severely just because they had it dumped upon them. You don't know what's going on in their lives. And that comment could hurt them just because of what's going on in their lives. Or someone like me who is naturally very, very reserved, except for when I'm in, say, a position like this where I'm acting as a specialist, essentially, because I have that library degree. Otherwise, I don't do crowds, um, quite literally. Uh, I have a hard time talking to people in person, so I have a hard time putting myself out there in real life situations because I have social anxiety and have pretty much my entire life. So when I make a comment, it's always supportive. It's always positive. I do my best not to hurt people because I know that I could be on the other end. And I don't want to hurt people. I may <laughs> work very hard not to. And that's something I plan to teach my daughter, is the biggest power that we have for people we do not like on social media is silence. Stop following them. Stop engaging with them. Just 
walk away. I mean, that's what you, you're, that's what we're taught to do. If you can in a fight, walk away because there's no point. There's, I do not argue with people on the internet. Why? Because there is no point. I'm not going to change their mind. I don't know them. They don't know me. There's absolutely no point in arguing with a person on the internet. I have a cat here. So I don't bother. I use the to other tools provided for me by occasionally these social media posts. I lock people routinely. Even on Facebook groups, I follow. If I see someone being too argumentative and too forceful, even if it's they're, they think they're doing good because they're representing this and they're representing that and they're trying to correct people. It's pointless. You're not going to do it. Not on the internet. It doesn't work uh, most of the time. You're more likely going to just get in an argument or you're going to hurt someone. So it's best to be silent and to back off. Use your voice in a different way. Now, I like a lot of people admire Martin Luther King. He had some good points. He was a human. He was most definitely a human and a flawed human at that, as we all are. But he said something, at least that I remember quoting, is evil flourishes when good men remain silent. Now, I fully agree with that. However, the internet is not a place to do this because it's an, it could be a giant echo chamber. You're not actually actively engaging very much with actual people. You don't know these people. You want to bring a voice? Protest. Vote. That's how you not remain silent. Don't remain silent in public if you can. Um, if you see people being harmed, stand up for them. Don't remain silent, but do this in person. Face people, not faceless things on the internet, because again, you're not going to change anything. At least in person, you can stop something. You're not probably going to change someone who's harassing someone, but in that moment, you can at least stop it. And you can show the person you're standing up for that they are not alone in that moment. Now, of course, there are all sorts of nuances to this. Not putting yourself at risk is a big one. Don't do this to get yourself killed. But <clears throat> again, do it in person, not as a faceless voice on the internet. That's the biggest thing. Again, what was done to Lindsay Ellis, how they destroyed a human being over nonsense. Nonsense. I don't care how much you're offended. As an indigent person, as an Asian person, you're attacking a human being over nonsense. Nonsense. You don't destroy a human being like that. That doesn't put you on the higher ground. That does not make you a good person. You attacked a human being. She may have put herself out there. Does not matter. You attacked a human being and you tore her to shreds because of a mob mentality. That sucks. You, nobody should, nobody deserves that, no matter what. Even the most annoying of right wing cret, net, white, right wing nutcases do not deserve to be torn apart on the internet. Do they possibly deserve it? Maybe. But the way you fight guys like that is you don't listen to them. Silence is a very, very important tool. Walking away. You turn your back. You do not allow them to continue to have a voice in your life, in your family's lives. Don't amplify it. Don't amplify the negativity. Strangely enough, makes me think of a book series that I would love to cover here, but I'm 
pretty sure it's out of print. Um, oddly enough, it's called Twitches. <laughs> it's a young teen uh, kind of magical fantasy book series. But at the very end, these two twin sisters who have been being harassed by their uncle, he's tried to kill them multiple times, including moments before this scene happens. Basically, they're told, it's like, wait, you can buy the rest of their community. It's like, you can have him banished. We can kill him. What do you want done? Their answer? He's to be ignored. That's his punishment. Is essentially, they're not going to take his money. They're not going to take his fame. They're not going to take his life. They're going to take his voice. They're going to ignore him. And that's what they had the community. Everybody turned their back on them. That is how you stop the nonsense. Is you stop giving it a voice. You stop talking about it. You stop interacting with it. You don't like a YouTuber? Fine. Stop following them. They're no longer in your life. These people, particularly on the negative side who are sensationalism, they exist because people let them. Because people are listening. Because people give them views. Because you watch them. That's why. If nobody was paying attention, they'd stop because it wasn't worth it. So that is how you fight this thing. That's what I'm going to teach my daughter is do not engage. Do not insult people online. Do not fight with people in social media. Do not leave horrible comments on YouTube videos or Twitter. Do not retweet nonsense no matter what. Um, because you don't know if it's real or not. You don't know these people. You do not retweet this nonsense. You do not tweet nonsense. I mean, that's something we're learning. Or technically, just stay away from Twitter in general. Um, very possible. Twitter is a, uh, a very good mom mentality nonsense place. But don't engage with that. Block people. Don't comment on it. Just cut them out and move on. I mean, yeah, there's been times where people have left negative comments when I've recommended something on Reddit and I want to scream and I want to yell and I want to fight with them, but I'm an adult. I have free will and self-control. As much as I rant and rave in my head, I block them. Every time. I'm proactively in blocking people on Facebook and on Reddit. If I see people who have views I don't particularly like, um, particularly in on Reddit, one of the big places is the homeschooling Reddit. I see people recommending um, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. I just block them automatically. I don't engage with them because there's no point. I've seen people on a Facebook group for the Secular Eclectic Academic, the C group, where they've been attacking people on occasion. Sometimes it's it's never with the intent to harm. Normally, it's they're disagreeing with someone's views, and it just snowballs. And I'll just block those people because they're being unnaturally aggressive. Most of the time, they're not being aggressive. <laughs> it's not me. I mostly, at this moment in time, do book, uh, do book recommendations because I don't have the experience. Therefore, I do not add to it because I don't have the experience and I know books and my child is far too young. So I only speak about stuff that I have experience with because again, I know, I know what I have knowledge in and I'm not going to argue. So, but I will block people. That is my plan with this YouTube channel. If people are leaving incessant and harmful, pointless comments. Um, I'm just going to block. I'm going to delete the comment and block and move on because, again, this is a hobby I'm doing for my own self-care. I'm doing this mostly for myself and to share people in a positive atmosphere. I do not care about the algorithm. I really, really don't. I'm doing this video, though, with 
may blow up a little bit just because I'm using the word name, Lindsay, Lindsay Ellis, and she's very, very um, trending right now, which sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Um, and that's not what I'm banking off or off of. I would never do that to another human, let alone a YouTuber that, and an author that I admire and respect for what she's done. I've watched her TED Talk and watched how what's happened to her is isolating and destructive and how she was isolated from friends and family because people were afraid to stand up for her because they would be attacked by this flash mob. So I'm doing this because what happened to her greatly affected me along with a lot of other people who supported her. And we all, they su we support that she needs to step away for her, for her own health, for her own well-being. That's what's important. I believe that of pretty much all the YouTubers I watch. I watch them because I admire and respect them. And I wish them the best, even though I do not know them. I watch their content because it's enjoyable. I watched Lindsay Ellis's content because it was informative. It still is, as long as her stuff is posted. I will recommend it because it is good content. And she did amazing stuff. Gave me insight to a lot of things, including particularly Disney. She was the person who taught me about what Beauty and the Beast was really about. She made me respect, not necessarily the corporate organization of Disney, but the idea of the feminist of princesshood. And she changed my mind on that, and I respect that. She did amazing things. And it hurt me, along with a lot of other people, that due to social media's behavior, she could no longer continue the work she was doing. That it was no longer worthwhile to her because it was damaging her health. Physically and mentally, it was destroying her and eating her. And she needs to step away. And a lot of other YouTubers, particularly those who started off in the very beginning, and they have a huge library of stuff, have stepped back. They stepped away because it's not, because essentially the platform became unhealthy for them. So that I respect, as I should, and as should everybody. And we are learning how these platforms can become very, very toxic and how dangerous they are. I mean, Twitter can be very, very dangerous when allowed to happen. When it's used as any other tool, it can be used in both a positive and a negative way because it is a tool. I always say that about the internet. The internet is not inherently evil. It is a tool. It is the people who are using that tool who can mismanage it and use it to cause harm. And so people have used the internet to harm other human beings because it is faceless, because they can hide behind a screen and they don't have to do, say this to a, to a person's face. Now, there was a person who had issues with Lindsay Ellis who knew her in person, and that was Maya Wilson. Now, I obviously do not know the whole details of this, but she participated in the retweeting of some of the negative comments. She became part of that problem. Um, if you're unfamiliar with who I'm speaking of, of, she was a child star. And you will see evidence of my reaction to what had happened to Lindsay Ellis next year. Because last night, after I found out, I had to film the, or at least I needed to, to get it done, was the Miracle on 34th Street comparisons. And Maya Wilson plays Susan Walker as a very young child in the modern um, rendition of that film. So you will fully see my emotional reaction. I actually did that video um, later than I normally do because I wanted to get it done. Normally I will stop 
again, so I can wind down at night by eight o'clock at night. My daughter goes to bed relatively early. So I wanted to get that done. And so I'm emotional to an extent in that um, video just because we, I had recently found out and realized that this young actress as an adult was part of this mob mentality, despite the fact that she had previously been friends with Lindsay Ellis. She knew she was attacking somebody she knew in person, which kind of makes it worse. When you're attacking somebody that you used to be friends with and you're an adult, that's a case of, I don't care what the heck was your problem with each other. You don't go tearing someone to shreds over the internet, particularly when you have a following like she does because of her former child stardom. She, she was in quite a few, several very well-known films as a child from Matilda, which I had, would, I've already covered. Um, I know. Uh, and yes, I think I covered this Matilda this year. Uh, no, maybe it's next year. Sorry. I have most of 2022 filmed already. <laughs> um, so it, unless I'm looking at what I have to do, it, gets mixed up. Um, Matilda has been covered and she's the main star of that film. She was also in Mrs. Doubtfire. So as well as Mil Miracle on 34th Street. Those are the three films off the top of my head that are very, very well known that she was in. And that people, particularly my age and even her own age, are going to remember. Because these films were part of our child, particularly Mrs. Doubtfire, because Robin Williams. So she has a following. I actually had to look up to realize, okay, is this the same person? It's like, yes, yes it is. So she was part of that. And so it was hard to make for me to do that um, comparison. But again, I, their library DVDs, I wanted to get it done. And I want those, my husband will probably go to the library on Friday and I want them gone. <laughs> so I want them... I want to return them back to the library so I don't have to, basically, I wanted to get it completely done. So I'm mildly, I'm emotional in that. So that will not premiere until literally December of next year, just so if you were aware of um, what was going on. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to say this and repeat this again. Yourself and your children, teach them to be respectful on the internet. If you do not have something nice to say, do not say anything at all. We've heard that said a lot. That's a big thing to remember on the internet. If you want to stand up for people in person, do so. You want to protest? Go right ahead. Vote. Always encourage that. But don't do it on the internet. Sign petitions. There's your voice. Standing up for things. The internet, arguing with internet people, it, it's pointless. You're not going to change people's minds. There's nothing wrong with being inside your own echo chamber. There's really not. Unless you can respectfully have debate and have respectful criticisms, which it seems very, very hard right now. Often it's safer to be in your own echo chamber and do your own research into different things. But you're not going to get that information from arguing with somebody on the internet. So, as an adult, I have the power to disengage, to stop following, to block people, to remove myself from different Facebook communities if I think that is causing harm to myself. I don't engage. I will delete comment, horrible comments on my own channel and blog. Always. That is my tool. I will not engage because as an adult, I know better. I know that not that you don't, you don't give fuel to the fire. But that's something you have to learn. So, and unfortunately, the internet is still new. Social media isn't that old. 
I mean, Twitter's, I'm in my late 30s. The internet popped up in the common sense when I was about 12. <laughs> Smartphones didn't exist until somewhere around 2010, 2011. Those Android and Apple phones are not not that old. YouTube itself isn't that old. It hasn't it's been around for less than 20 years. That's not a long time. It's not. We are still learning how to manage this minefield and people who were there from the beginning didn't have the tools or the knowledge or the foresight because they couldn't. They didn't know what this is going to become. I, who didn't really start engaging until the last couple of years, again, I didn't really start paying attention to YouTube beyond stuff that I was actually required to watch for grad school. <laughs> um, so I didn't really start engaging with it as a normal person in my off hours, essentially, until about 2017. 2016, 2017. So I haven't, and I mean, Lindsay Ellis, a lot of people, she'd been on it for a while since it started, which I have no idea when it was, <laughs> back in the beginning. So, but they still had to, it was a brand new, it was a brand new platform. Twitter's really new. I mean, I can remember it didn't exist in 09 when I left for my Peace Corps tour. Smartphones, really, at least for the general public, for most of the masses, didn't exist. I got my first smartphone when I got home from the Peace Corps in 2011. And they were still relatively new. I mean, they were... It, it was a new phenomenon. So all of this stuff is young, and we're still navigating it. And we're starting to utilize the tools of how to protect ourselves and not engage and engage or engage responsibility on these social media platforms because always always remember this there is a person at the end their end a living breathing human being do not dehumanize people and that's what's happened to not only Lindsay Ellis, but there's been other people who've been dehumanized by social media because they had put themselves out there before it was really clear how dangerous it could be and what something like Twitter and this mob mentality in what can be a faceless interaction could become. So, again, I'm a person. All the creators you watch on YouTube, at least in general, are humans with hearts and feelings and pasts and traumas. And even if they're putting them, themselves out there on the internet, does not mean you have any right to attack them. And yes, that goes for celebrities too. Yeah, don't attack celebrities either. They didn't ask for this. They're doing a job. They happen to enjoy entertaining people. They did not ask for this. Now, are there certain um, people, like say the Kardashians, who intentionally are going after being certain uh, media personas that are doing specific things to draw attention to themselves. Yeah, but you still probably shouldn't attack them. You still don't know why they're doing it. It could be mental illness. For all we know, these people are crazy. Um, it, it could be desperation. Who knows? But they're humans. They're maybe crazy humans, um, but they're humans. And it's just... If you don't like them, do myself like myself. Don't engage in the media. They're out there because people give them attention. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing this. They just want attention. 
like a two-year-old having a temper tantrum, though I don't recommend ignoring your two-year-old. Um, a two-year-old is a two-year-old. An adult trying to do this, there's something else going on. But don't attack them. Ignore them. So that's literally your best option, is turn around and walk away. That is how you use your voice, is by ignoring them and allowing them to realize that this is an appropriate behavior and you're not going, it's not going to get them what they want. So that's really the end of this. Again, this is going to be posted as soon as I can edit it. It's something that's done from my heart and it's being posted rather quickly just because this happened. This is being filmed on the 29th of December. Lindsay Ellis put her Patreon thing out on the 27th. It kind of went crazy the 27th, the 28th. And I was deeply moved by what she posted and on what people did. So it is a cautionary tale in many cases on how you treat people and how we need to realize that our words have power to destroy people or to lift them up. I choose to help lift it up. I compliment the YouTubers I follow. Why? Because they're putting themselves out there. I'm now putting myself out there. Why? Because I want to help people. So that is the end of this video. If you like what you see here, um, this is not your regular schedule programming. Normally I do children's book reviews and film reviews and fun stuff. I will do occasionally videos. I've done another internet safety video. Um, you can check that out. That's That's been posted. But like and subscribe. Check out what I've got. I am a secular homeschooling parent, so we're not religious. We're homeschooling for other reasons. Um, I will add that stuff as we go on. I will add stuff occasionally like this if it moves me and I think that I have something to add to the conversation. So, however, normally I am going to stick, to stick to educational stuff and book reviews. And no, I don't normally critique things. I don't actually, with the exception of a few things, I do not cover stuff I do not like. Um, there's a mild exception when it comes to the um, Last Apprentice series, which will come out at the end of next year and that's just because it's horror <laughs> that's not it's not my genre um i do not talk that bad about those books i just describe them and make it clear that that is not my genre if you want to really understand that's not my genre i did the princess diaries after that and that will be coming out in 2023 so but otherwise i do a lot of book reviews mostly children's stuff some more adult stuff so check out what i've got um, don't, if you want to leave a positive comment, do so. If you want to leave a neg negative comment that's insulting, you'll be blocked immediately and that comment will be deleted. If you want to threaten me with all sorts of nonsense, please be aware I'm married to an attorney. You cannot scare me. I'm married to an attorney. So, I again will delete and block horrible, distasteful comments. I am doing this because something moved me. And I thought I had something to add to the conversation to the limited amount of people who are paying attention to. So again, check out the rest of what I've got. Normally it's not this. <laughs> and I have a whole bunch of fun stuff, entertaining stuff coming for the next year. Uh, I do have the, if you want to check that out, I have the entire video of that coming out on Friday. That will literally tell you everything that is planned, at least in the book sense and the film sense for the coming year. I will probably at least add one board game um, in 2022 because we got something for Christmas from a sister-in-law for my toddler. And I will probably review that. So along with possibly some of my Christmas presents my daughter got in the form of toddler books. <laughs> So, but check out the channel, enjoy the content, leave positive comments if you have them, 
like and subscribe if you choose. Otherwise, walk away. Thank you.